Hello everyone, and welcome to tutorial number 29. As we continue our journey into the intricate world of web scraping, in this video, we'll be advancing our skills to tackle diverse web elements using VBA. From honing in on specific elements with ID and classes, to harnessing the power of CSS selectors, this tutorial is packed with actionable insights. Whether you're a beginner aiming to build a strong foundation or an intermediate user looking to elevate your game, there's something for everyone. So without further ado, let's dive in and start exploring. Here in Module 1, I have crafted a robust piece of code encompassing all the versatile methods we are discussing today for extracting data from HTML. If you have been following our series, you might recognize the first three methods, get element by ID, get elements by class name, and get elements by tag name from our previous sessions where we explored them in depth. Now these subsequent three, get elements by name, query selector, and query selector all, might be new territories for some of you. These methods are crucial for those instances where you need a bit more firepower to pinpoint and extract the exact piece of data you are after, especially when dealing with diverse and complex HTML structures. So, let's walk through this code together, scrutinize every method, and observe how each one interacts with our sample HTML to fetch us the data we need. For those who have been following our series, I'm going to assume you are already familiar with the initial setup of Internet Explorer object and the document object from our previous tutorials, so we'll skip straight to the various methods of accessing and extracting data. If you're new or need a refresher on setting up the Internet Explorer object and document object, I recommend reviewing our two previous tutorials to get up to speed. All right, before we start exploring the various methods for extracting data, let's put a breakpoint just before set doc equals IE dot document and run the code. This will navigate us to the URL specified in our code without progressing further into our VBA subroutine. This way, we can interact with the web page and illustrate the concepts using live examples. Here, we will be working with a sample HTML code that I'll insert into the sandbox. This acts as a simulation of a real-world scenario, allowing us to extract data as we would from a live website, and thus, enabling us to showcase all the different methods in our code in a single, cohesive example, instead of jumping between multiple websites. Now having set the scene, let's address why we are using iframe doc instead of the more common doc in our code. If you observe the structure of our URL's web page, you'll notice that the sandbox where we input our HTML code is an iframe, a document embedded inside the main document. This is why we are not directly using doc, which we typically use to represent the main document. To correctly target elements inside this embedded document, we create an iframe doc object. Here's how. After initiating the Internet Explorer and navigating to the desired URL, we set the doc as usual, representing the main document. However, to access elements inside the iframe, we define another object, iframe doc. The line of code, set iframe doc equals doc.getElement by ID, iframe result, dot content window dot document helps us in achieving this allowing us to interact with the elements inside the iframe seamlessly. This distinction is crucial for accurately extracting data from web pages with embedded documents or frames. Now that we have our iframe doc object correctly set up, we can start interacting with the elements inside it using different extraction methods. Before we dive into these methods, you may have noticed that instead of directly extracting data into the Excel sheet, as we did in our previous tutorials, we are using debug.print. It is a valuable tool that outputs data to the immediate window within the VBA editor. This method is incredibly useful when you're testing and debugging your code, allowing you to view results quickly without having to interact with the Excel interface every time. It's especially handy in situations where you need to validate the accuracy of the extracted data or when you are troubleshooting your code to locate potential errors or unexpected outputs. So with this approach, let's commence with the getElementById method. This method is pretty straightforward. It allows us to zero in on elements using their ID attribute. In our HTML sample, there is a heading element that reads distinctive heading with an ID. 
identified by the ID MyH1. So when we run the line of code, we're specifically targeting the text inside the heading with the ID MyH1. This will yield the text distinctive heading with an ID in the immediate window. This approach is concise and exact, a real asset when you're sure of the ID of the element you need to target. Let's execute our script up to this point and monitor the immediate window to validate that it indeed pulls the text from our identified element. Moving on, let's delve into the get elements by class name method. Referring back to our sample HTML, observe that we have two div elements assigned the class my class. The first one houses the text, this is a div with a class, it contains a paragraph and an input field, while the second one holds, this is another div with the same class, it contains a different paragraph for distinction. Now by executing the line, we are directing our script to capture the inner text of the first element it encounters with the class name my class. This will fetch the content of the paragraph inside the first div tagged with my class, showcasing it in our immediate window. Let's now run our script up to this line and verify that the immediate window is displaying the text from the correct element within our sample HTML. Next on our list is the get elements by tag name method. This method is versatile, allowing us to target elements by their tag names such as p, div, h1, and so forth. In our sample HTML, we have several tags, but for demonstration, we will focus on the h1 tag, under which our distinctive heading is nested. Our line of code will extract the text from the first h1 element it encounters, which reads distinctive heading with an ID. This method can be highly useful when you are dealing with HTML structures where class names and IDs are not assigned, but you know the tag name of your desired element. Let's run our script up to this point and validate the output in the immediate window. As you can see, our script has correctly extracted the text within the h1 tag, affirming the accuracy of the get elements by tag name method. It's worth noting that if there are multiple elements with the same tag name and you want to extract from the second, third, or any subsequent ones, simply change the index in the parentheses. Right now, zero refers to the first occurrence. If you needed the second, you'd use one for the third, two, and so on. All right. Now let's venture into the get elements by name method. This method is crucial when web elements have a name attribute. In our mock HTML, there's an input field with the name attribute set as my input. On our sample web page, the input field reads input field with a name attribute as its default. However, for this demonstration, let's enter hello world into the box. This is where the distinction becomes key. Even though the HTML attribute value is set to input field with a name attribute, by using the dot value method, we'll extract the current content of the input box, which now is hello world. It allows us to capture live user entered data rather than the default values set in the HTML. Now when we run our script up to this point, focusing on the get elements by name method, we should see hello world appear in the immediate window. This showcases the ability of the get elements by name method in conjunction with the dot value attribute to fetch real time data entered by users. As we observed, hello world appeared in the immediate window. It's especially useful when working with forms or any dynamic content on websites. This real time extraction capability is invaluable in a multitude of scenarios. With the basics covered, let's now delve into more advanced methods. The query selector method offers a flexible way to target elements. This technique leverages the power of CSS or cascading style sheets, which is a language used to style and design web pages. In CSS, selectors are patterns used to select the element you want to style. Hence the term query selector. It literally queries or searches for elements based on these CSS patterns. This line utilizes the CSS class selector.myClass 
aiming to capture the first element adorned with that particular class. It is important to note that the dot before my class indicates we're referencing a class, while the prefix hash would be used for an ID. There are more such prefixes and we'll delve into them in our upcoming tutorial. As you have seen earlier in our mock HTML, there are two divs assigned the class myClass. With this method, we extract text from the first div, which states, this is a div with a class, it contains a paragraph and an input field. What's impressive about this method is its adaptability. By mastering CSS selectors, one can pinpoint almost any element with precision. Running this code line will fetch the text from the chosen div, subsequently presenting it in the immediate window. Let's see it in action. Great! With the query selector method under our belt, let's transition to its sibling, the query selector all method. While they sound similar, there's a subtle yet crucial difference. The query selector method returns the first element that matches the specified CSS selector. In contrast, the query selector all method retrieves all matching elements. Given our sample HTML, the difference between the two methods becomes clear with the dot my class selector. Currently, our code targets the first div that matches this class, extracting its content. But since there are two divs with the dot my class designation, we can tweak our approach to illustrate the adaptability of query selector all. By altering the zero to one, we're shifting our target to the second div. Now when we execute this modified code line, we should observe the content of the second div, which reads, this is another div with the same class, it contains a different paragraph for distinction, appear in the immediate window. This demonstrates the versatility of query selector all, coupled with accurate index selection, to target specific elements even when multiple elements share the same attributes or classes. When working with real-world websites, you might encounter scenarios with many more elements sharing the same class. Being adept with query selector all and understanding the index system can be invaluable in such situations, ensuring you fetch data from the precise element you intend to. Before we conclude, there's an essential point about real-world applications we need to address. In this tutorial, we use the term iframe doc because our mock web page was situated within a sandboxed environment known as an iframe. This was done for demonstration purposes. However, in real world applications, especially when using Internet Explorer for web scraping, you'll typically interact with the main document. In these scenarios, the correct term to refer to the main document is simply doc. Understanding this distinction is vital as it will help you avoid potential confusion and reduce the risk of errors in the future. Here's a brief example of how you'd structure your VBA code for web scraping in real-world situations. That wraps up our tutorial for today. As we proceed further in our series, we'll delve deeper into the capabilities of Query Selector. In the dynamic landscape of the web, where designs frequently evolve and elements shift, the importance of adaptability can't be emphasized enough. The ever-changing nature of websites demands versatile tools, and Query Selector All stands out as one such essential utility. It empowers us to navigate the fluidity of web structures with precision, preventing us from being bound to a single strategy or a static methodology. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been enlightening and encourages you to explore more about web scraping using VBA. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this tutorial helpful. I hope to see you in the next video.